Well, good morning, everyone. Very warm welcome to St. Jude's Church this morning. A particular welcome to you if it's your first time back in the building. Welcome this morning. Welcome to everyone who's connecting online with us as well. We hope you very much have a blessed morning with us this morning as we gather around God's words and break bread around the Lord's table a little later in our service. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus' offer to us is way more than meeting our physical needs. Jesus offers us life. Jesus offers us life in himself. He really is what we're truly looking for. Let's pray as we begin this morning. Heavenly Father, as we gather this morning... Please help us to lay aside those things which our hearts so easily run after and shape us that we might be those whose greatest joy is found in Jesus. Please conform us more and more into his perfect image, the image of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We ask this in his powerful name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to invite Neil to come up now. So one of the things that this coronavirus has done is robbed us of the chance to celebrate things and also to mark events, hasn't it? And just as the crisis started, just as the lockdown started, John Gray, Reverend John Gray, who served this church for many years and given us so many memorable sermons, said that he was going to step down from preaching and, uh, and serving as a priest for our parish. And... We wanted to mark that, and this is the first time that John has been with us, so I've just got a small gift uh, to give to John from St. Jude's at this point, just to say thank you for all his work and uh, to thank him for all his support. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's two things. So Paul encouraged the Corinthian Christians to examine themselves before gathering around the Lord's table. Let's take this moment to look to Christ together. Perhaps this has been a standout week for you in your journey with Jesus, or maybe this last week has been the worst possible week for you. Well, wherever we're at with the Lord today, let's use this time to look together to the one who died and rose again for us. Let's confess our need of his love and forgiveness and his mercy, which is new every morning. And we're going to do that now in the words of the confession that are going to come up behind me. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. The Bible says if we confess our sins... God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Almighty God, we thank you that you are a purifying God. Thank you that in Jesus we find life and justice and forgiveness for our sins. We thank you that you alone bring healing 
and give us joy as we're reminded that there is no one like you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's stand and sing together of the joy that we share. Water you turned into wine. Let's stand about our, and sing about our God.
some fantastic worship well done guys and over here but that it was better over there but it was great well done right so it's time for the children to go so as you know we've got embers which is uh, nursery up to school year three and we've got blaze which is years four to eight this morning for the first time we're starting beacons plus again and that's going to go every two weeks and that's for year nine up so, if we start with Embers going over there to meet with Lavinia. So, if the Embers make their way over that way. That's lovely. And then if Blaze come over here to meet Devita. Perfect. And then Beacons Plus go to Dom, who's at the back there. Lovely. So let's just pray for, oh, gosh, what a fantastic number of young people. So let's just pray for them. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for our children and for our young people and for the leaders who lead them. And we pray that you will bless them all mightily today. Draw them closer to you, Lord, that they might know more of you, not just in their heads, but in their hearts. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We have two readings today to help us think about being witnesses. The first is taken from Romans chapter 1, verse 16 to 17, and is on page 1128 of our Bibles here. It's Romans chapter 1, verse 16 to 17, page 1128, where Paul writes this, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. And then the second reading is in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. This is on page 1082 of our Bibles here. John chapter 14, 1 to 6. And it's during the Passover meal. Where Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. These are words from God. Thank you, Gary. Good morning, church. It's lovely to be here. Now, I'm going to start with a question to make sure everyone's awake. So, who can remember two weeks ago, what were the last words that Jesus said to the disciples in Matthew's gospel? What were the last words? What did Jesus say? Yep, someone over there knows. That's uh, the vicar's wife knows. Anyone else? Um, David's got it. 
go and make disciples. Jesus said, go and make disciples. Those were the last words that Matthew records Jesus saying. This morning, I want to look at the last words that Luke records Jesus saying, because they're just as important. And another thing that Jesus wants us to take on and to do, I was going to look after the slides, and um, let me just try and do that as well. So in these words are found, not at the end of Luke's gospel, but at the start of the book of Acts. So in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus says these things, this to the disciples. He says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So you might think, well, here he is again. He's given us something else to do. It's not me. It's what Jesus said, okay? Jesus said, you must be witnesses. You will be witnesses. So today we're thinking about being faithful witnesses. This week, I watched a David Attenborough documentary. I can really recommend it. It's him saying pretty much how much havoc we're wreaking on our planet. And he said he can no longer stay quiet about what he's seeing. And he calls this documentary his witness statement. It's not an argument, because arguments are different to witness statements. It's a witness statement that says what David Attenborough sees going on in the world. And it's very powerful, because witness statements are, aren't they? It's not saying, you must believe this. It's saying, this is what I see. This is how I see it. And that's what Jesus wants us to do in our faith. He wants us to say, this is how I see it. This is what I see Jesus doing in his world today. He wants us to be faithful witnesses. So we need to be these witnesses wherever we are. Five years ago, I went to China with the Bible Society And the church in China is growing faster than anywhere else in the world. This is not a slide of virus infections. This is a slide of the number of Christians in one province in Jiangsu. And if you look at it, and you might not be able to see the the bottom clearly, it says that between uh, 1990 and 2010, the number of Christians went from 200 to 2,000, from 200 to 2,000. And the church in China is growing so fast that they're having to open a church every week to cope with all the new Christians. They can't train the pastors fast enough in order for them to keep up. And so when we went as a group of church leaders, our big question was, how is this happening? How is your church growing so fast? Because that's what we all want. As church leaders, we want to see the kingdom come. We want to see our churches grow. We said, is it because you're doing lots of alpha programs and getting people in to do courses? Is it because you're doing big mission events like Billy Graham did and lots of people are coming? Is it because you're doing door-to-door evangelism or work with children and youth in the schools? And they said, no, we're not allowed to do any of that. Our government won't allow it. So we said, well, why? Why is your church growing? How is your church growing? And they said, it's the ordinary Christians who come to church, have their lives transformed. And their neighbors, those around them, see the difference. They see the difference in the way that they live. Husbands stop shouting at their wives. They start looking out for people who aren't in their family. They respond to earthquakes and floods. They're honest in a land where there's lots of corruption. And in the cities and in the villages, the churches are growing because people see the way that the Christians live. And they go to church to find out why they've changed and how they can live in that same way. The way we live should be a witness to who we serve. There should be enough evidence to see in our lives that we're followers of Jesus. But that's not usually the way that we do it in the West. In the West, 
we've usually thought of witnessing in two ways, not just the way we live, but in our works or in our words. And for a long time, there was a big division in the church about how to witness to Jesus. Some churches thought it was all about works and other churches that it was all about words. And some people might say, well, the works is a bit easier. It's a bit softer and touchy-feely, isn't it? You give people soup or you give them uh, rucksacks that will help the homeless. You help people and you serve them and that's nice and easy to do. And they might say that some people would say that the words are a bit harder because you have to challenge people. You have to tell them that Jesus is the Lord, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You have to tell people that one day there's going to be a judgment and they're going to face their maker and they're going to have to tell them why they lived their life the way they did. That might be a bit harder. So sometimes there's been this either or situation arising. But what we found in the last few decades is that church works much better when it's a both and. When we do both works and fit them together with the words. So as a church, we want to be a church that does that sort of thing, don't we? So we want people to see Jesus at work in our works. We want to have people see the food bank at St. Margaret's and want to come and join in. There was a day last week when Fran was the only Christian volunteer amongst all of the volunteers who were serving on the food bank because people had come past and they wanted to join in with what the church was doing. Fran, as only Fran can, made sure that Jesus was right at the very heart of all that was going on there. Jesus wasn't forgotten. Jesus was at the heart of it. And then in our Friday fridge, we've had people who've uh, got in touch with the church during lockdown because they've walked past and seen us feeding the poor and they want to come and get involved. And we've altered slightly the way that we do Friday fridge so that we can accommodate those people, not diluting our message because we're going to pray for people. We're going to say we're doing this because Jesus told us to. But we want people to join in and people to come to know Jesus through the works that we do. We do that when we do things like the feeding the 5,000 that we did last September. We do that when we care for people in lockdown, when we phone up and we look out for those who we know might be alone or isolated. These are all works that show that Jesus is present amongst us, that the power of his Holy Spirit is with us. When we do these works, we're bearing witness to Jesus. But alongside those works, we, almost, we also need to be ready with words to say. This is what Paul said. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. Now, Paul had given up a safe and secure life. He'd been one of the leadership in amongst one of the leaders of the Jewish people. He'd had status, he'd had security, but he'd given all that up because he met Jesus. And now he was telling people about a man who died on a cross like a common criminal. He was telling people about a man who died naked while people walked past and watched his agony as his life ended. And Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. I've only been a witness in court once when I had to give evidence. But when I was a witness and gave evidence, I made sure that I'd thought through all the things that happened at the time when the man I was giving evidence against was arrested. I wanted to make sure that I gave a truthful representation of what happened. I thought it through and had in my mind all that had happened. I relived that moment again and again so that when they asked me the questions, I would have a truthful answer to give. And that's what Jesus wants us to do with being witnesses for him. We need to think through what are our answers going to be when people ask us to witness for Jesus. How are we going to do that? How are we going to give truthful answers that show people who Jesus is? If we believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, 
We need to be ready with answers, don't we? And the biggest way that we can witness is to tell people our story. And last year, we looked at how we all have a story to tell of what Jesus has done in our lives. We talked about having 100-word stories which would be short enough to tell someone in a lift or at a bus stop. And they can always ask other questions after you've told them your story. It's a story about what you were like before you met Jesus, how you met Jesus, and the difference that Jesus has made. And it needs to be simple in ordinary words and language so that people can understand. And if we all practice that story, then when somebody says, well, why do you go to church? Or how come you're a Christian? We will know what to say and we'll have confidence in replying. So we need to practice our hundred word stories so that we can give some evidence to Jesus at work in our lives. And once we've done that, we may get asked, well, what does it all mean? How does it all fit together? What is this good news that you're talking about? And we need to have a plan of how to do that. And everybody can work out their own plan. We looked at lots of those in our year of mission. But for me, this is the plan that I use. And I've got it on a bracelet on my wrist to remind me. And I've got it on my woolly hat that I wear into church in the mornings that might just show it to somebody else. And, um, and I picked this one up off of Chloe earlier on. This is Chloe's hat that doesn't quite fit me. But you can see it's got these four points on. Because these four points give us a simple framework to explain the good news, that God loves us, and that's the best place to start, isn't it? That God loves us. But we've gone wrong, that's the other cross. But Jesus died for us, that's that cross. And so we need to decide, that question mark, what are we going to decide about whether we follow Jesus? It's not a complicated message, is it? It's something that we can all pass on, can't we? And then if people want to know more, we can encourage them to come on an Alpha course. And our Alpha courses are still running. There's a course running right now online that we started with St. Margaret's. And 10 people are joining on Zoom. And they're watching the, the brilliant Alpha videos. And they're getting the message of who Jesus is. And we can point people in that direction. We don't have to have all the answers, but we need to point them to a place where they can find them. And alphas are still going on, so get in touch with me or Adam, and we'll point you to when the next alpha is and how to join people to it. We need to be witnesses in the way that we live, in the works that we do, and in the words that we speak. That's the message for this morning. It's not a complicated one, because we don't need to be complicated. Jesus wasn't complicated. Paul sometimes got a little bit complicated, but um, Jesus certainly wasn't. And we need to have a message that we can spread and share with all those around us. So during these last few weeks, we've been on a journey around the building blocks of our faith to remind ourselves that when everything is uncertain and shifting, we have a firm foundation on which to build our lives. We've thought about our relationship with God, about awesome worship and passionate prayer. We've thought about how we do church together with creative community and being committed disciples. And we've thought about how we reach out in transforming uh, ministry and also by being faithful witnesses. All of those things rest on Jesus, because Jesus is the foundation stone for our faith, isn't he? At this particular moment in the life of our nation, there are lots of people around us with troubled hearts, aren't there? And it is troubling, isn't it, these days that we live in? All of these statistics, the graphs going the wrong way, the restrictions building up and building up. But Jesus says... Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. If we believe and trust in Jesus, if we take these words seriously, we will have a firm foundation for our lives. 
And we will be able to witness to those around us that Jesus makes a difference for us. Because when people judge him, and when they say, oh, Jesus isn't really all of that, how can you believe he's a savior and the son of God? We need to be able to be the witnesses who present the evidence to show that he is who he said he was, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in Jesus, because he is the way, the truth, and the life, the one on whom we can build our lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as this world becomes more anxious and uncertain, we give you thanks that we have Jesus. And we know that we won't always be filled with joy or hope or peace, but we know where to go when the tough times hit us. And when we have doubts, we know that you will always be there, that you will never leave us or forsake us. We pray that we would be able to witness to your holy power at work within us. In Jesus' name, amen. Good. And now Richard's going to come and lead us in our prayer. our prayers this morning we'll use the response Lord in your mercy hear our prayer Lord in your mercy hear our prayer just to begin with some brief words from 1 John chapter 3 dear children let us not love with words or tongue but with actions and in truth let's pray Almighty God, we thank you that you call us to be ambassadors of Christ and to imitate him closely. Help us to be those who love others as he loved us and gave himself for us. We thank you for the work of Tear Fund, following Jesus where the need is greatest across many parts of the world. We pray this morning for its work in Sierra Leone. In that country, the abusive practice of female genital mutilation is widespread. We ask for the success of Tear Fund's recent new project to tackle the practice and that it will be eradicated in Sierra Leone and elsewhere. We pray also for those vulnerable people living in refugee camps in Colombia, especially women. Many fled the crisis in neighboring Venezuela only to arrive over the border just as the COVID lockdown was beginning, preventing effective assimilation or the finding of work and obstructing the effective delivery of food, medicine and other aid. Several months on, there is particular need amongst pregnant women and their newborn babies. Father, we thank you for the work of Tear Fund and its local partner on the ground, Pro Familia. And we pray that much needed antenatal care and support for new mothers and their babies will get through. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in our own community, we pray for those who are elderly or housebound, amongst whom will be those who in normal times would have been at Monday Fellowship or Thursday Club, with the prospect of increased restrictions on freedom of movement and the onset of winter. We pray that you will sustain and support them and prompt us to serve them as we are able. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we pray for healing and wholeness for all those known to us who are unwell and whom we name before you in our own hearts in a brief moment of silence now. We lift to you also the bereaved family and friends of Paul Waite and Dhanapala Patabendi, asking that they will know the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit and a profound sense of your daily presence alongside them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We'll conclude our prayers together with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Richard. So we're coming now to uh, our time of communion, and this is the first time that we've uh, had communion together as a 10.30 service since the start of the lockdown, and we still haven't worked out exactly how to make it work with the children as well with us. So the children are staying in their groups this morning. We're going to work on that and try and make things move forwards. But we wanted to start slowly, uh, take a step at a time, and, uh, and move this forward uh, as we can. So um, as we come to communion, we uh, share the peace, just looking around to one another rather than hugs or kisses. But our risen Lord stood amongst his disciples and said, peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So we share the peace with those around us. So we're just able to share the wafers with everybody and people will bring those to your seats. So just put your hands out if you'd like to receive the wafers. If you don't want to receive it, then you can fold your hands and people will offer you a blessing prayer instead if you'd like that instead. So if we can have our prayer. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your son, Jesus Christ, to be our saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking the bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you and gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did 
In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. And then we say, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word, and I shall be healed. Good. So if those who are coming to distribute would like to come up, they're going to sanitize their hands thoroughly before they start to bring the wafers round. body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Dex is going to take these and also come up to the balcony. If you're in the balcony, you haven't been forgotten. We'll get to you when we can.
Phoenixes to share with you before we sing our final song. Can you hear me? There we go. Just uh, a few notices to share with you before we sing our final song together. Uh, there is a quiz night coming up this Thursday, backed by popular demand, Dom Taboo. There's going to be a linear quiz from half past seven until nine o'clock this coming Thursday. Uh, please check the news sheet for the Zoom details to get involved with that. Um, and secondly, can I just give a show of hands of those in the church family who believe that we have a big God who answers prayer? Incredible. Well, we've got a great opportunity next weekend to pray together. We're going to have 24 hours of prayer next week. Uh, please do get involved. Why not sign up for a to come and join in and pray and let's pray for our church that we would be faithful witnesses in the way that we live our lives and what we say to the world all around us. Let's pray for our friends and for our family in 24 hours of prayer. It starts next Saturday after a prayer breakfast. Come and join in for that. Uh, there's two details that do get involved. Uh, any more questions then, feel free to have a look on our website, have a look on Church Street, and also Facebook. There's loads of information about that. Please do get involved. And thirdly, the final note is, is about Adam Towns, our new vicar, is going to be getting licensed on Tuesday the 10th of November. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. That's great news, isn't it? <laughs> we really rejoice and look forward to Adam coming to join us here. Um, just to uh, note that sadly it's become an invitation service only. So you can watch the licensing. It all, uh, it's going to be live streamed onto Facebook on uh, the 10th of November, 7 p.m. is going to start. Lots of information about that is on Facebook and again, Church Street. Do look out for that. Well, we're going to stand together again. The band are going to sing for us our last song. Let's stand up and worship as uh, Holy, Holy, Holy. It's going to be so Just gone to my phone mic, so I'll I'll pop it back in.
parents once left me in Tesco's by myself when I was a child. So can I encourage parents not to leave without taking your children with you? It does leave a scar. I carry it around with me. So uh, please don't forget your children. Let's have a final prayer and blessing before we conclude. God, who from the death of sin raised you to new life in Christ, keep you from falling, and set you in the presence of his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.